Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I've come across a video by Ken O'Body, aka Ken O'Booty, aka the so called Bruce Wayne of the fitness industry. Oh, Greg, I was wondering what a breakfast, your spirits, or your body. But uh, joking aside, I clown Greg a little bit. I do like to clown him, but I actually don't dislike Greg. I actually actually kind of like Greg as a person uh, as far as what he does. I don't actually hate him or dislike him like I do a lot of the people in this industry. So let me go ahead and put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right. Uh, so Greg put out a video discussing the reality of staying lean. And here's what I'm going to say with that. I might not always agree with him on a lot of things, but it's pretty obvious. All right, let's set aside BS. Let's set aside trolling. Let's set aside having fun. Greg does stay pretty lean year round, right? And I think it's fair to say that his mindset is the reason he pulls it off. He made the video, and I'm going to be inclined to agree with him on this one. Uh, I don't actually find myself in disagreement with Greg when it comes to diet or diet strategies. He actually has good ideas and a good head on his shoulders with this stuff, and, the, and they do work. They work. My beef usually with, with Keno Body tends to be uh, sometimes his form on the training, right? Sometimes his form on the, his pressing. Everything else is great. Some of his presses, he performs them in a dangerous way. He's going to get hurt. I point that out regularly. Uh, that I don't think he does enough leg training. I don't think he promotes enough leg training. And we'll come to that in a minute, too, when it comes to his maintenance calories. Uh, again, talking about having people with 2,600 maintenance as a lifter who does a lot of squatting and deadlifting, I, I can't even phantom a grown ass male athlete having a 2600 maintenance. Uh, damn, I would starve. I, I can't imagine my maintenance calories being that. I can't imagine my weight loss calories needing to drop to 2600. But that and then his whole supplement thing, because that's one of the things I'd said years ago, uh, and I used to joke about it, called him Kenobi the wise one. And I was like, you were the chosen one, you know, because he used to be anti supplement, then he started pimping supplements. All right, that's, that's one of my beasts with Greg. Uh, the fact that he knows and publicly said numerous times years ago that he knows that supplements really don't work. They're, they're a scam. You know, other than a few basic things like creatine and other stuff, they're a scam, they're a hustle. He knows that, he acknowledged that, he didn't need them, didn't recommend them. And he was right, and then he starts selling them. It's like, Greg, come on, man. You sold your soul for 30 pieces of silver. Getting them shekels. But that aside, let's talk about what he, he said that was of value in the video. Because those are my beefs with Greg. I don't have any other beefs with Greg. I don't have any other beefs with Greg with that stuff. Um, all right, so what did he talk about with the dieting? Of understanding the mindset of people cannot... I'll, I'll reward what he said. He has people do caloric deficits that are relatively small and have maintenance days all the time so that they can transition to maintenance. Why? Because you can't be in the mindset of cutting... In other words, if you see a cut as a thing that you do and you get to an end goal, you're not going to stay lean. He's absolutely right. And that's one of the reasons that when I get people who are like, Jason, you know, you've been doing this long, slow cut. Yeah, you're down 40 pounds, but why are you taking so long? That was like, you know, you're like 11 months into this. Um, yeah. Why? Because when people do a quick cut, they always regain it. Have you guys ever seen me do that? Right? There are people who are like, Jason, you never cut. No, I have done fast cuts on camera. It's just that I regained the, the weight so quickly that people don't even realize I did a cut. Why? Because I did it fast. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, look at all the fitness YouTubers out here who you see do two pound a week cuts and all this other bullshit. And they see it as this is my cut. This is where I'm going to get to the school. How many of them actually get legitimately fat? I mean, fatter than I am right now. Right? I'm not talking, oh, 16% body fat fat like I am because that's where I'm at around 16 right now. Uh, I'm talking guys who are hitting 20% plus again after being ripped. Every single damn one of them. All of them. Anyone who says in their mind, I'm going to cut, I just want to get to my goal quickly, here's my cut, they get lean, then they get fat again. Every time. All the research shows the same thing. You look at data on weight loss. Every single study done on people shows what? The faster you lose it, the more likely you are to regain it. All right, there's a direct correlation between that. Direct correlation. The faster you gain it, the more likely you are to, to regain it, or the faster you lose it. 
Greg understands that, that it's not about cutting, it's about a lifestyle. If you guys legitimately want to get lean, which again, you guys notice you don't see me regaining fat either. I've been slowly. Why? Because it's lifestyle changes. I don't think in terms of I'm on a cut. So if someone were to tell me right now, Jason, are you on a cut? No. Were you really on a cut during the last 40 pounds of weight loss? No. It's lifestyle change. Adjusting my eating habits. Following a set pattern that will allow me to very, very slowly and gradually lose fat over a couple year period till I get leaner, uh, to retain strength, retain muscle, to even do some recomping in there. But I'm a strength athlete. I'm basically thinking of it as slowly dropping weight classes. But that's the point. Um, and because I understand that guys like Greg are correct. You go look at Greg. Look at that video I just did. I did another one discussing a PhD uh, who competes in bodybuilding. And, you know, he talked about some of that too. Explaining, yeah, people who, who actually have a long-term goal of saying, hey, I'm trying to get somewhere and stay there. That's going to be a lifestyle change. And Greg is right. If you're doing something that you can't live with, that you're uncomfortable with, that you can't sustain, it's not going to work. In other words, you're going to regain all of it. You're going to regain all of it. And that's what he talked about. That's one reason he just has guys. It's not for, for metabolic reasons. Guys, this whole metabolic damage thing is bullshit. Reverse dieting is bullshit. It's a scam. It's a scam by coaches to hustle physique competitors. That's all it is. Um, so why do you have people do refeed days? Like he said, so that they get used to maintenance. In other words, they transition in their mind. This is what maintenance looks like. This is what deficit looks like. So you might have them doing, what, 500 calorie deficits? That's not very big. Most of the week, and then even having, if you're doing a refeed day every week, you're losing less than a pound a week on that, right? Works. It works, though, because it also puts them in the mindset of this is what my maintenance looks like. And you, he gradually would transition them into that lifestyle to where they're already doing one day a week at least that is going to be what they're going to sustain. And the other days they're focused on the fat loss. They're already part of the way there, and that's a gradual weight loss. I mean, if you're only doing a 500-calorie deficit of half the week or six days out of the week, and then you have a maintenance every day, you're, you're going to lose less than a pound a week. Well, that's perfectly reasonable. Um, and notice the body fat that Greg stays at. Now, and, and this is where I'm going to take issue. He's talking about being ripped. You're not ripped, Greg, and that's not a bad thing. I tell people don't get ripped. Getting ripped is stupid. He's sitting at, you know what, 9-10% body fat? right? 10% is what he looked like in that video. That's a sustainable body fat. You know, that's the difference between being lean and being ripped. And so when people hear me say that you shouldn't get ripped, they think that I'm excusing people being fat power lifters or whatever. They're power lifters who are ripped. I don't know where you guys get that. Uh, you guys are confusing certain elements and certain aspects of the sport with, with what really is going on at, the, at a lot of the top levels. Um, but 10% sustainable. That's lean, right? That's lean. That's a lean body fat. It's not unsustainable. It's when guys start trying to drop down to 7%, things like that. You can't sustain that. You're going to be absolutely miserable. You will be miserable and your life will not be worth living. Your life will not be worth living at 7% body fat. You, you probably, you'll either binge, you'll fall out of it, or you'll end up killing yourself because you'll be the most miserable cunt on the face of the earth. Um, <laughs> it's not sustainable. Uh, and that's kind of the point that he makes is that, you know, you are trying to do a sustainable lifestyle. And, and that's what I would agree with him on. If someone says, Hey, I, I have a certain threshold I need to reach. Uh, this is where I want to get. That's fine to get to a nice lean body fat, take as much time as you need to get there, make it a lifestyle change and understand that whatever strategies you do to get there, if you, it's not a strategy you can sustain for the next three years, Expect to regain the fat you lose. You're not going to maintain that body fat. In other words, it's like I always get guys like, why don't you just do some T3? Why don't you do some? I don't see why you don't just do some DNP because I don't want to stay on DNP for three years. What do you think happens afterwards? If you use a shortcut strategy that's not a permanent lifestyle change to lose body fat, what happens? You regain it. Um, and you know, look at bodybuilders. Bodybuilders is the most unhealthy shit out there. Bodybuilding is the single most unhealthy thing in the whole fitness world, right? It, it's, it's horrific. Those guys all regain their fat. The strategies they lose for fat loss are not permanent. Nothing that they do is. They all, almost all of them, 99% of them regain the fat they lose. So in other words, this whole cutting phase thing, instead of saying, hey, here's, here's just a lifestyle uh, that's not realistic for the for the normal person because most of you guys who do that who aren't going to go do some bodybuilding show or a photo shoot, 
you're going to be there for what two weeks what's the point you're going to put yourself through suffering and masochism to uh, be ripped for two weeks and you're going to get fat again that's stupid um, and I would agree with Greg on that. Look, if, if a person says for whatever reason their aesthetics, their health, their athleticism, they want to get at a certain level of leanness that is still within the healthy range, then use strategies that you can sustain. In other words, whatever you did to get there, you're going to have to continue to do that the rest of your life. Right? You need to find strategies that you would feel comfortable doing for two years straight. If you can't do that, it's going to be a problem. So, yeah, you do need to be looking in terms of uh, people joke about, oh, four-year cut fire. They always do that joke with me, which is not even based on reality because it's not even the timeline. Um, the, but that would be actually a good thing. Isn't that what you want? Whatever strategy you're using to get leaner is what you're going to probably need to sustain for the next five years. So you are going to be doing a five-year cut. And that's a great point that he has. And that, that's where I'm going to agree with him. And that's the positive note I'm going to leave this video on. He's right. If you look at any dietary strategy, whatever tool you are losing to, to get lean, if you look at that tool and can't see yourself doing that, that every week for the next five years, it probably isn't a good lifestyle tool. You're thinking like a competitive bodybuilder instead of someone who actually wants to be fit and healthy as a lifestyle and a permanent thing. And, and I happen to agree with, with his mindset there. I think it's wise. I think it's smart. I think it, it's good advice. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.